Hi, this is Coach Todd at CoachNoLimitsTriathlon.com. In a few minutes, I'm going to interview Tyler Hamilton. We are at the Calgary JCC, and he's here to uh, give a talk for the uh, Calgary Jewish Center uh, Sports Dinner, and uh, we're excited to have him talk. So we have about 10 minutes, and we're going to try and go through some questions. And um, I hope it's going to be pretty interesting for you guys to see. This morning, we did a bike ride with Tyler uh, just down in the northwest of Calgary, and it was, it was awesome. We, uh, we had a group of about 50 or 60 people, and uh, we showed Tyler some great Canadian animals, so or wildlife. First thing we saw was a, a, a Canada goose, and then uh, shortly after we saw a beaver, and then uh, Mike pointed out, hey, there's a moose. And so when the moose, when we saw the moose, Tyler just stopped, went over to the side, the whole pack just stopped, and we hung out and watched this moose. So that was, uh, it was fun, uh, the ride was very low key, uh, he did a great job keeping everyone together. There were some fast riders, some medium speed riders, and some slow riders. And what we would do is we'd uh, ride as a pack, and then we'd stop, regroup, and continue that way so everyone got uh, to hang out with Tyler. And he made his way through the pack and talked through many, pe talked to most people, and so everyone could have uh, a few moments with Tyler and have have, have their questions asked. So. Uh, we're about to do this. Uh, Mike's my videographer for tonight. Thanks, Mike, for doing this. You're welcome, Tyler. And uh, Tyler should be here a moment, momentarily. So we're pretty excited. At the end of this talk, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Tyler to uh, sign this book. He is uh, just wrote a book called The Secret Race. What this is is inside the hidden world of the Tour de France. Here, here it comes, Tyler. What the doping and cover-up. Okay. Okay, I'm Todd Malcolm, head coach of NoLimitsTriathlon.com. Tonight we have a special guest appearance by Tyler Hamilton. So thank you very much for doing this, Tyler. And, and in like 20 minutes, you're about to go give a talk to uh, how many people are there? 600 people. 600. Yeah. And so we're stealing a bit of his time for this. So it's a big deal. This morning we did a group ride with about 60 people, and we showed Tyler some of uh, Calgary's best riding. And you saw a beaver. I saw goose. A, yeah, Canadian goose, a beaver, and a moose. And a moose. A moose. It was great. Ama great. Amazing. I'll never forget today's ride. So, I think many people feel the same way. Really? Oh, cool. You know what? Cool. It's going to be with me for a long time. I really enjoyed it. Cool. It was, it was a nice social ride. I mean, everybody, it seemed like everybody had fun. And nice. obviously, we lucked out with the weather. And yeah. So we got some short questions for you. So you are the author of The Secret Race. Now, yeah. I'm not going to go into much about the book. Because I think I'm a huge fan of the book. But I think if you want, we talk about the book, buy the book. Okay? I'm going to keep it like that. At the end of this, I want you to sign it. And then I'm going to give this away. Oh, cool. To some people on my website to cool. make a little, uh, some kind of a question they got to answer. Yep. And then we're going to make a draw. And then oh, we're, cool. Then we're win Good it. for you. Quick questions. Uh, now that your secret life has been exposed, <laughs> how has your life changed? Oh, man. It's, it's taken a 180 degree turn. Like, yeah, the, and it was just by telling the truth. Like, I, I had no idea. You know, like, it make, I almost get makes me want to cry because it, it's, um, yeah, I was hiding the truth for a long, long time. Okay. And, you know, a lot of that's in there, but, you know, this yeah. probably book probably isn't for everybody, you know. Yeah. It's heavy. Um, it was, it was the, one of the hardest things I've ever did, did in my life was to write this book, you know. I'm proud of writing it, but not necessarily proud of what's in there. You know, it's... So, but it's, but I feel very lucky. I feel very fortunate to have kind of come out the other side and, like, yeah. to be... Yeah, I've, I'm very fortunate. So the story is basically about you uh, in your pro cycling career, and y you were basically doping with many other people, and then at the end you came clean and said, "This is what I've done." And now yeah, but you know, it took me a long time to come clean. I didn't come clean right away. That's like, right. I was ready to go to the gra grave with it all. That's like, right. You know, it took a, a grand jury subpoena for me to come clean. Right. So, but when you think but, of it, I mean, that was a you know, I was. That grand jury subpoena was like the best thing that ever happened to me. That's awesome. You know, yeah, for sure. So on our ride today, we're talking about honesty. I know that I think in your book you said your family crest would be about honesty. Yeah. Right. So, um, how how important is honesty now to you? Do you tell the truth about everything now? It's so important. It's so important. And yeah, I, I'm all about the truth. Like I can't tell a lie anymore. It's it's awful. So don't 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 even test me because it sucks. Like I mean, you know what I mean. Like sometimes like you you can't. I can't lie anymore. It's I know like, we said not to test you, but I'm going to test you today. Uh, we were both skiers growing up. We're both dental skiers. 
And, uh, What's the story? Like, I already forgot the story, but now well, it's... Well, the, the thing is, is, have you ever jumped off chairlift? Oh, sorry. Bleep, bleep that out. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 I did. That's it. That's the only question about... about oh, no, but it was worse than that. <laughs> Atatash ski area back in New Hampshire. I'm sorry for jumping off that chairlift. During the, it was it for, during a downhill, like a downhill race. Did you have downhill skis on? Yeah, but it was a training day. You know how they have a downhill ski race? You typically have two training days and then a race day. Yeah. And one of the training days, it, it dumped a foot of powder. So myself, Eric Heider, and Chris Davenport... Chris Davenport has gone on to be a world-known skier, extreme skier. We all jumped off the chairlift. And, 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 yeah, sorry, Chris. <laughs> and um, but it was awesome. It was awesome. But we almost got the whole race canceled. But nobody ever knew it was us. What? Till now. Till now. So that's your man. Okay. So yeah. mental toughness. You call that your mental toughness is a gift that you have. Part of you being so tough. Now I know recently. Yeah, yeah, a gift and a curse, you know. Gift and a curse. Yeah. Now I know you recently started becoming a coach. Yep. So how do you like? I always tell people that you have to get comfortable being uncomfortable when you're racing. Yeah. So what do you tell your athletes? How do they become? They can become mentally tough. I'm gonna steal that one from you. Yeah, if that's all right. No I like. Problem. I like that. Yeah, trademark. I like that. No limits. No problem. What's that? Trademark. No limits. Okay. Cool. <laughs> no problem. Cool. Um, I mean, uh, the biggest thing I tell my clients is like listening to your body. You know, nowadays we have s 578 different gadgets you could put on your bike yeah. or, you know, on your watch if you're running or yeah. whatever. And it's, people forget how to l really truly listen to their body. So mm -hmm. um, for me, sometimes, what's that? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Okay, cool. Yeah. But I'll, I'll give you some time alone before. She's awesome, by the way. Uh, get her. Get her. Yeah. And what's her name? Yeah, I'm I'll talk. You I'm just video her. The JCC, which is what the fundraiser is all about. And you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. I'll be back. <laughs> back to gadgets. Back she's, to gadgets. She's, she's awesome. Okay. Listen to your body. Yeah, listen to your body. There's a, there's a gazillion gadgets out there to tell you how you're feeling, but a lot of people forget. A lot of people don't even know how to listen to their body. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So, okay, so I got some questions I like. Uh, this is actually my favorite question I like to ask uh, athletes I interview is, uh, what's the first thing in the morning you, you say to yourself? Or you think in your, in your right, right when you wake up? What do you think or say to yourself? Today, I mean, I don't know if I have a saying every day, but I, always, I wake up every day thinking today's going to be a good day. Today's going to be a good day. Yeah, not Perfect. necessarily a great day, but a good day. A good like, day. Yeah, yeah. What's the last thing you say before the bed? Um, that I'm an idiot, I guess, you know? I mean, I've told myself that many times, like okay. in the middle of the night, yeah. in my, uh, the uh, conversations in your head, you know? Yeah. Okay. So, um, right. yeah, that's the last thing I say to myself. Uh, we're both coaches now. Yeah. Which I think is awesome. Yeah. You know? I consider myself a teacher. A uh, teacher, so. Yeah. Uh, when I first started getting into coaching, I started to focus on high-level athletes. Yep. And now I focus on people who really want to change their lives and get in shape. Yeah. And that's who I really inco enjoy coaching. Yep. I mean, I still enjoy coaching the high-end athletes, but that's kind of who I like the most. Yep. Is there a, t a, a specific type of per athlete or person you enjoy coaching most? No, it's funny you say that because um, I've definitely kind of stayed away from that higher-level athlete. Um, you know, we, go, we make a point of just not working with any professional athletes. Um, we're geared towards more recreational type cyclists, you know. They can race a little bit on the weekends if, you know, if that's what they choose to do, and yeah. as long as they're having fun with it. Right. But if they're not having fun, like I'm going to be the first to say, like, you know, maybe I'm not the right coach for you. Right. Like here are some coaches, you know, back where I used to live in Boulder, Colorado, that, that are going to be a little bit more maybe number savvy than me. Mm -hmm. um, like on, on today's ride, I was watching you, you're riding, you're on your bike with sneakers on and you cut corners on the grass. I'm like, this guy's having fun. Yeah, I had a blast today. So I had a blast. It was a, I had a blast. It was, a lot of fun. it was cool. Um, a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're not having, whatever you're doing, whatever sport you're doing or whatever profession you're doing for work, if you're not having fun with it, if you don't enjoy it, like, it's not worth it. Any, any job, you know? And I always said that about cycling, like, but obviously, it, it went over that point, you know. 
for a few years there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, you got to have the passion. If you're not passionate about it, then shoot, there's, there's a lot of things to do in this world. You know? Sure. And there's, she's another thing, another sport, another job, whatever. You've done a lot of interviews in the last year, right? So yeah. With some pretty big names. And uh, what's one question that you wished people asked you but they never ask you? I got a, I had some great questions today. Um, I don't know if this is like the biggest question. I mean, certainly not the biggest question, but like somebody asked me today, who is your favorite teammate? And I, I, I think it's, I've never answered that before. Uh, Nicholas Jalabert, hmm. the younger brother of uh, Laurent Jalabert. Right. And I could talk to you for two hours about Nicholas Jalabert. So. You talked about him in the book. Yeah, I talked about him in the book, yeah. And, but I could talk to him for, I could write a, almost a half a book about him for sure, so. He's got a special place in my heart. So, awesome. and yeah, younger brother Laurent, Laurent Jalabert, stand-up guy. Tyler, that's it. I'm gonna let that's you go. It? Well, cool. I want to. Sorry, I got, you sorry I got rushed. Well, it's totally fine. Uh, taking his time for us is no, huge. Is cool. So we're very cool. grateful you did it. Cool. Uh, Best of luck to you book. and your company. You're you're doing an awesome thing. Yeah, you're same thing awesome. with you too. Oh, thank you. And so, if we can help you out in any way, we'll be in touch for sure. Give me a shout. Okay, thank then, you. Yeah, head coach is Jim Capra. Okay. He's the man. Okay. He's the man. So that's it, guys. I uh, hope uh, Tyler has enjoys his uh, uh, time in Calgary and your, your journey in life. Thank you. So Thank you very it. much. Thank Anyone you. else? That's it. Happy training.